their keys, each one imbued with a message. Altair ibn La'ahad, August 12, 1257. Hello, I'm Andrew, and I want to welcome you to Visions of the Past, a podcast all about the lore of Assassin's Creed. This is episode 94, and today we're going to talk about Isu artifacts that were collectively known as Memory Seals. So far within the series, we have only seen Memory Seals in Assassin's Creed Revelations, but they were also mentioned within Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and alluded to within Assassin's Creed 3. What are memory seals, you might be asking? Well, they are disks that had the ability to contain recorded messages. Originally designed during the Isu era to record brief memory impressions that allowed for others to re-experience the memory. Abstergo believes that because of how few disks that were found, less than 40 to be exact, that they were not casually used by the Isu, but intended only for the wealthiest and most powerful members of their society. The earliest known usage of memory seals was actually mentioned in an email from Juno to Desmond Miles in December 2012. In this email, she stated that Isu Minerva and Tinia had left messages, and that she thought that they were for Desmond. After being locked within the Grand Temple, she threw them away, stating that they were filled with lies, and that even though she hated humans, and Desmond in particular, he would be the one to save them and she would be the one to lead him to salvation. Sometime between 1228 and 1247, Altair ibn La'ahad found an Isu temple beneath the fortress of Alamut. And within that temple, he found a few memory seals and used five of them as keys to the library under Masayef. And a sixth he used as a key to a small vault where he hid an apple of Eden that he held for most of his life. Each of the seals that he chose as keys, he imprinted important memories of his life on them. The five seals that he used for the main door contained his memories of a crusader skirmish at Masayef in 1189, the revolt shortly after he burned the body of Al Mualim in 1191, the death of his wife Maria Thorpe and his subsequent exile in 1227, his return to Masayef after exile in 1247, and the departure of Niccolo and Maffeo Polo from Masayef during the Mongol invasion on that city in 1257. These five discs were given to the Polos for safekeeping, as well as Altair's codex. The sixth seal Altair took with him into the library and recorded the last few moments of his life on it. The Polos took the seals that they were entrusted with and hid them throughout Constantinople, in small tombs at Topkapi Palace, your Baton Cistern, Galata Tower, the Forum of the Ox, and the Maiden's Tower. Here they would sit until 1509, when an earthquake hit Constantinople, which allowed the Byzantine Templars to find the seal that was hidden at Topkapi Palace. A few years after finding the seal, Prince Ahmet entrusted Manuel Palaiologos with an expedition of Masayef, with the goal of getting within Altair's library. This brought about an extended search of Constantinople to find more of the discs. Between 1511 and 1512, Italian mentor Ezio Auditore ended up in Constantinople looking for the seals himself, after finding a letter written by Giovanni Auditore that mentioned Altair's library and finding that Masayef was overrun with the Byzantine Templars. Eventually, he did find the four seals hidden around the city and traveled to Diriku to recover the fifth from Manuel Palaiologos. After killing Palaiologos, Ezio was confronted by Prince Ahmet, finding out that he was the Grand Master of the Byzantine Rite, and was forced to give him the seals in exchange for the life of Sophia Sartor. Ezio did retrieve the seals before Ahmet could do anything with them and traveled back to Masayev. This time, though, with Sophia by his side. When they reached the library itself, Ezio used the keys to enter while Sophia waited for him outside. Inside the library, Ezio found Altair's body holding onto the sixth seal. After grabbing it, he relived Altair's final memory, just as he did the other five, 
and found out it was the key to a small vault holding an apple of Eden. There are two other memory seals found during this time as well. In 1511, soldiers of al-Ashraf Kwansu al-Gwari, the Mamluk Sultan at the time, found them while excavating the Library of Alexandria. The seals were kept in a chest that was dated 331 BCE, but were not held by the Mamluks for long, as Egyptian and Ottoman assassins recovered them shortly after they were discovered. The assassins took them to the local assassin headquarters, where they were studied by a woman known only as the Blessed Initiate. While she tried to unlock the mysteries of the seals, Templars mounted an attack on the headquarters, though the Ottoman assassins were able to hold them off. Other than the email that Juno sent Desmond in 2012, the only other mention of the memory seals was a file within Abstergo Entertainment servers that focused on several different ISU technologies, one of which was the memory seals. Speaking of the Abstergo file on the memory seals, it shows that it is similar, if not based, on the Fastios disk that was found in the Minoan palace of Fastios on the island of Crete in 1908. Though the real interesting thing is that in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we see the Fastios disk is actually the key to opening the vault that leads to the Minotaur. I love the memory seals. They are an absolutely great way to connect characters across time periods without needing to see the characters or having them related. Like, what if we had Eivor find a disc within each of the Hidden One's bureaus that had a memory imprint from Amunet that relived important moments of her life, like the death of Kimu or the final conversation she had with Cleopatra? There's just so much that these Isu devices could be used for to connect the series' protagonists to each other, that only having them in one game is vastly underutilizing their potential as a plot device. You could have connected Arno to the Fries, or Rataka Haytan to Lydia Fry, you could do so much with them because you don't necessarily need to have the characters in the same area to have them connected. The Eivor and Amunet connection is easy because of the Magnus Codex showing that Amunet possibly was in that area while she was alive. There's just so much these devices could be used for that making them only being seen once is a sadness that I feel should be rectified. But what do you think about memory seals? Let me know over on Twitter at visions underscore AC. And I want to thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love stories about Assassin's Creed lore, please tell your friends and follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform. And if you want to support this podcast and help provide for new episodes, I'd love for you to buy me a cup of coffee at bit.ly forward slash visions coffee. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC, or you can check me out on TikTok at visions of the past podcast. And you can find those links in the show notes below. One more thing before we get out of here. We are coming up on 100 episodes and two years, and I have something very special coming up for the month of December to celebrate those milestones. Keep an eye out for that, and be warned, they will be exceptionally longer than what you are used to and deviate vastly from what you've seen from this podcast before. But it is something that I am looking forward to, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun with. And until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.